Today we're going to get you playing faster and you're going to understand the point I was making by playing the Top Gun theme with all of those various items. Make sure you watch the entire video because I'm going to cover three main points that are applicable to all skill levels to ensure that you play faster right away. Also, make sure to check the link down below in the description. I'm going to put up some free picking exercises in PDF and Guitar Pro formats. And as always, if you want to support my teaching channel, you can sign up to be a member at patreon.com forward slash Paul Warren Music. There you'll have access to tablatures, backing tracks, and private lessons. Now I had one major point to prove by playing with those various items, and that is we do not pick the same slowly as when we are playing fast. You may sort of realize that already in your own playing. But the reason I would point it out by playing with a picture of Gilligan or a box of mac and cheese is to emphasize that you shouldn't necessarily use the same techniques for both fast and slow picking. That may sound odd at first, but if you're using a picking technique that involves a lot of extra movement and not a lot of precision, it's not going to work to simply practice more and hope that speed comes along the way. Many of you have probably encountered this in your own playing and wondered why speed never gets to where you want it. Think about walking versus running. We don't practice walking and walking faster until we're running. We learn to run by working on running. They are two different techniques. Let's look at this concept on the guitar. I can walk through a pattern on the guitar slowly and use almost any picking technique or picking item and play the notes successfully. But there's no way to build speed doing this. So you need to work on a technique for playing fast and that may mean a brand new technique for your hands. In order to work on your running or your fast technique, Let's talk about the three main points I want to cover today. Regardless of how you hold the pick or have picked in the past, if you can implement these three main points, it will definitely improve your speed picking. And keep in mind, these are ideals. None of us are going to do these perfectly, so just keep these in mind when you're doing serious practice. These are big concepts that do work, but we can discuss finite things like pick slanting and note groupings in another video. Number one, let's discuss your setup on the guitar with your picking hand. Regardless, if you're on an acoustic or an electric guitar, I want you to come over this part of the guitar with your arm and keep a straight line from the elbow down through your wrist and your fingers. This positioning allows your hand and wrist to be in a perfectly relaxed position and have the maximum movement up or down. If you begin from a position where your wrist is already bent like this, for example, you're limiting your mobility to pick down. You might have a lot of mobility going up, but obviously it's already a bit kinked here and it's gonna cause problems. We want a relaxed and comfortable position for our arm, wrist, and hand, and this straight line position is the best approach. This setup also has the benefit of starting your pick at an angle to the strings. You can always pick better at an angle to a string versus parallel to the string. If you're parallel to the string, it's easier to get hung on it. So with this setup here, you're able to start with the pick at an angle on the strings. Number two, put as much of your arm, wrist, and hand into contact with the guitar. The more of your arm and your wrist and hand touching the guitar, the better. You're simply closer to the strings and it helps minimize your movements. Many of us might float above the strings here. And while that might work for slow notes, it doesn't necessarily work for speed picking. Putting more of your arm and wrist into contact with the guitar means that you'll probably become more of a wrist picker, which is what we want. We don't want you to be an arm picker because those are much bigger motions. Now I rest on the bridge and the strings and it's absolutely okay to rest on the strings that you're not playing. In fact, it helps mute the notes that you don't want to ring out. Plus, at some point you're going to have to mute notes, so you need to be able to get down on the strings and play. Number three, you need to move up and down the bridge. Do not anchor your hand on the top of the bridge or on the body of the guitar and attempt to play all six strings all the way down from that anchor point. As you can see, if I play up here, it might be comfortable, but once I reach down to the first string, it's extremely uncomfortable, but a lot of people make the assumption that you need to be anchored in one point and never move from there and things will work out better. Not necessarily. It's much easier to keep that straight line position nice and relaxed and play here and then simply slide down the bridge and play the second string, we'll say, with the same angle. You may not do much sliding up and down if you're on adjacent strings, but if you play something longer,
Think about sliding up and down and maintaining that relaxed wrist. If you keep your angles fairly consistent, you're going to naturally be more relaxed and therefore more accurate. Lastly, here's a bonus tip. Remember the walking and running we discussed? Try taking scale fragments and walk and run through them. By practicing walking and running inside of one scale fragment, you're practicing your slow technique transitioning to your fast technique. This really helps you gain control over switching between those two techniques and obviously is going to increase your accuracy and clarity. I hope you found these tips helpful and please make sure to download the free practice exercises that I put in the description link below. They are in your choice of PDF or guitar profiles and they're great for speed workouts. If you have any questions or comments about this, please let me know below and I'll make certain to respond to you. I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. It really helps my channel. And if you want to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell as well so you're notified of my new video releases. I'll see you all next time.